Hi everyone, I'm Chill and welcome back to another detailed champion guide. Today I'll be talking about the newly released champion on Battle Right, Thorn the Twisted Terror. And so please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Thorn is a tanky melee DPS champion who excels in controlling fights and playing the long game with his sustain and utility abilities. Due to him having access to some good control abilities, he can win trades against his opponents fairly easily since he can control most fights to his liking if he hits his control abilities. In terms of sustain, he has a few decent ways of healing himself and escaping or mitigating damage, and so this level of sustain coupled with his control abilities gives him his ability to play the long game by consistently winning trades and healing up lost health. While I feel that he is lacking a bit in some areas, like his burst damage and the fact that he doesn't do as well in less organized teams, I think Thorn is actually quite a well-rounded champion in terms of what he can bring to the fight and to his team, and so he is in a pretty decent spot as a champion balance-wise I feel. In terms of difficulty in picking him up as a champion, I think that he is a fairly difficult champion to pick up right away and will need some getting used to especially if you are new to the game. He doesn't really need exceptional mechanical skills to do well, but I think there's a big difference between Thorns who has good game sense and decision making as compared to those who have yet to polish their decision making skills in game. So yeah, that was just a brief summary of Thorn as a champion. Now I will quickly just give a quick rundown on how this video is structured before I get into the meat of the guide. As with my older champion guides, I have split this guide up into different sections and I've included timestamps directly to each section in the description below. So feel free to jump directly to a certain section that you need if you wish. So yeah, I will start off the guide by looking at his abilities one by one, describe what they do and maybe talk a little bit about how I would use each of these abilities. Then we'll talk a little bit about his playstyle, like what we should be thinking about when playing him in the round and all that, before we take a look at his battle right options and some potentially useful loadouts and builds. Finally, right at the end, I'll just briefly talk about some champions that could go well with Thorn and just give some final notes about him before we finish. I'd like to point out that I do not have a gameplay tip section like in my old champion guides anymore, since I feel like some of the tips are quite repetitive from champion to champion. And so these little gameplay tips will instead pop up in the video when they are relevant I suppose. And so yeah, with all that being said, let's begin. First off, Thorn's abilities. Starting with Thorn's left click or Moss 1 ability, Root Claw, this is Thorn's basic melee attack and it is a 3 hit combo attack that has increasing damage and effects with each hit. The first hit deals 12 damage, the second 14 damage and finally the third hit is a very short ranged hook attack called Root Grip which deals 18 damage and heals Thorn for 8 damage. Pretty cool. Just hitting air and not hitting any enemies can still activate this combo, so sometimes you might want to be swinging and attacking nothing just so you can get the third hit to make use of the increased damage and heal. Do take note that the range of the third hit is actually quite short, and so its use is usually quite limited. With that said though, you can typically CC a guy and then get closer to get the hit off for some nice damage and quick heals. If you like a challenge and enjoy trying to hook people with it, it will probably take a while to fully get used to its range I would say. But in a proper match, I wouldn't really recommend constantly trying to use it like a hook just like I mentioned, since you'll probably be compromising your own health instead for being out of position all the time. Thorn really isn't that great of a brawler I feel. Moving on, Thorn's right click on Moss 2 ability is Leeching Thorn, and this is his main ranged poke ability. What it does is Thorn will shoot two thorns one at a time, and each of these thorns deal 12 damage to the target while inflicting the thorn debuff. This thorns debuff works just like Croak's toxin debuff, and is basically just some damage to the target over 4 seconds, while healing thorn for a pretty decent amount over 4 seconds as well. The debuff doesn't stack, and so using it to hit multiple enemies with it is ideal, since you'll get to spread the damage out more, and you also get double the healing. Next up, Thorn's spacebar ability is Burrow, and this is his main survival and movement ability. What it does is Thorn will burrow into the ground, temporarily becoming immune to all damage and effects, while being able to move around freely with twice the movement speed during this time as well. After 1.75 seconds, or less if you activate it manually, Thorn will emerge from the ground to stun and deal 14 damage to enemies within the medium sized area around Thorn. Depending on the matchup, you'll probably be able to use this ability for both offense or defense, so I think the ability is definitely very versatile. You just need to be careful not to overcommit and be punished for pushing too far ahead with it since you are committing one of your most reliable escapes to that attack. 
Thorn's Q ability is Evil Clutch, and what this ability does is Thorn will grow these roots from the ground at a targeted location, and after 0.8 seconds, the roots in the ground will be pulled back towards Thorn, and any enemies or the orb caught by the roots on the way back will be dealt 12 damage and be pulled by the roots towards Thorn as well. This ability is an AoE ability, and so it can hit more than one target, and it doesn't trigger counters. It can be casted behind walls, and the enemies can still be damaged and pulled, but for obvious reasons, the enemies cannot be pulled through the walls to you. A good way of giving your team the best chance of getting the central orb every time it spawns would be to use this ability on the orb to pull it towards your team. Enemies cannot stop the ability by body blocking, since the ability is an AoE ability. Just be careful that they can still attack the orb while you're pulling them along though, so they may still be able to steal the orb from you if you're not careful or fast enough. Definitely an interesting and versatile ability I would say. Moving on, Thorn's E ability is Entangling Roots, and I think that this is one of Thorn's best abilities since it is his main control ability. What it does is Thorn will launch a projectile at the targeted location, and if it hits an enemy, the enemy will be dealt 8 damage before being entangled for 2.5 seconds. The way Entangle works is kind of similar to a Petrify, whereby the enemy will be given a 20 health shield, but is unable to do anything for the duration of the debuff. During this time, Thorn is also healed for a total of 16 damage over the duration of the debuff, unless the shield is destroyed prematurely of course. The best part of the ability is its CC component, since you can very easily take an opponent out of the fight for 2.5 seconds and make the fight unbalanced to your favour for that amount of time. Not only that, it can also be used as a setup for more powerful abilities like Ashka's stun, Jade's snipe and so on, so it is definitely very versatile. You can even use it on the enemy and then quickly use your Q to pull them toward your team, or slowly charge up more swan combos so that you can get that sweet 18 damage on the immobile enemy, while getting some extra healing for yourself as well of course. So yeah, a very nice ability indeed, and definitely try to use it every time it is available I would say. Unless of course you're saving it, in anticipation of cancelling an enemy's channeling ultimate for example. So those were Thorn's abilities that didn't require energy, now let us move on to those which do. Thorn's R ability is Bark Husk, and this is Thorn's Shield ability. What it does for 25 energy is Thorn will shield the targeted ally and protect them from damage and disables while the shield is up. Pretty sweet. The only downside is that the ally affected by the shield cannot move or cast anything during that time. The shield has 50 health, and it can last up to 1.6 seconds. What's nice about it is that it also has an added effect of being able to sort of reflect attacks at enemies. Projectile and melee attacks that hit the barbed husk will cause it to do a 12 damage AoE attack in a small area around it, and so it can be very deadly if used at the right time and the enemies are caught unaware. It doesn't matter if the attacks deal only 1 damage each or something, the shield will always deal 12 damage for every attack it absorbs, and so it is especially useful against fast attacking characters, or when it is used on an ally that is in the middle of the whole enemy team that is trying to kill him. Good use of this ability can be devastating for the opponents, but just be careful of the short duration of the shield, and the fact that it immobilizes the ally, making them susceptible to AoE attacks. Next up. Thorn's first EX ability is Thorn Barrage, and this is his Shift Mouse 2 ability. What it does for 25 energy is Thorn will launch 4 Thorns instead of 2, like in its normal right click ability. The only difference between the two abilities is that the EX Mouse 2 Thorns only deal 10 damage each, and they are shot out faster since both abilities have the same channel duration. Those Thorns still apply the Thorns debuff, so spreading the Thorns to different enemies makes sense. But typically, this ability is used more to burst a single enemy for 40 damage instead of trying to spread the damage out I think. Because the ability does a reliable 40 damage burst, it is a good ability to use to contest for the central orb. A nice combo to try to secure the orb would be to use Q to pull the orb towards you, and then use EX Moss 2 followed by a simple left click to secure the orb all by yourself. So yeah, just a little something to remember when playing Thorn. Moving on, Thorn's second EX ability is a shift space ability, Root Network. What it does for 25 energy as well is Thorn will borrow himself and nearby allies and emerge at a targeted location together with his allies after a short delay. Enemies in the targeted area will be stunned and damaged if they are still there when Thorn and allies emerge from the underground. While they are underground, they can't be affected by attacks or abilities at all, and so this is a good way of protecting your team from massive AoE attacks or CC while being able to either go on the offense at the same time or simply just running away. So yeah, another very versatile ability. 
Finally, last but not least, Thorn's ultimate ability on the F key is Dead Roots. What it does is Thorn will borrow and travel to a targeted location, imagine Ashka's ultimate ability, and he will deal 16 damage to all enemies caught by the Trail of Roots while on the way to the targeted location. This Trail of Roots blocks enemy projectiles, snares nearby enemies, and it also deals a massive amount of damage over its 3.5 seconds duration. It is very good if you can use this ability on a ranged enemy right after they've used their escape cooldowns since you effectively made them useless because of the roots blocking projectiles and they take a massive amount of damage while they try to run out of the area as well. The ultimate ability is also very useful when the enemies are near to the central orb since you can damage them and the orb at the same time, effectively killing two birds with one stone. The enemies will probably find it hard to contest for the orb as well since their projectiles will be blocked and melee attackers trying to get to the orb will have to deal with taking damage from your ultimate as well. So yeah, pretty nice ability to use to get the orb. One thing I found about using Thorn is that he has very good energy gain, so I feel he can charge up his ultimate ability decently fast, even though his other abilities that require energy are all very good to use as well. This makes it so that he is able to use his ultimate fairly frequently, so definitely practice making the most out of his ultimate ability since it can turn things around very quickly, or perhaps make your advantage over your enemies even bigger very quickly. And so that's about it for Thorn's abilities, now let us move on and talk a little bit about his playstyle. Thorn's playstyle is a bit more of a passive and opportunistic one rather than an aggressive one. While I think that Thorn can be played aggressively to a certain degree of effectiveness, I feel that he is easily punished if he plays aggressively and makes a mistake while doing so. And so for this reason, I think that playing Thorn patiently is the best way to play him. When he first encounters the opponent, I think that staying at a distance and just poking with mouse 2 and Q would be good. When poking with his mouse 2 ability, try to spread the thorns debuff so that it gives you more healing and it spreads out the damage to more enemies. This is especially useful against enemy teams that has no support champions to heal up those poke damage easily. If you manage to pull someone in with the Q ability, you and your teammate can try to punish the enemy for making a misstep. Unless the enemy has already used their escapes before being pulled in, they will likely use their movement cooldown to escape, and so this is the best time to use your E ability to disable them after jumping so that you and your team can capitalize on this mistake and punish them even more. While you're walking toward the target that you managed to root in place with E, you should be charging up your mouse 1 hits so that you can hit the target with a good 18 damage once you get close enough. If you feel that it is safe enough, then using your spacebar to quickly close the gap and deal damage to the rooted target is also a decent move. Just be ready to use your R to mitigate damage or disables if you need to I suppose. If you know an enemy has used all their escapes and you manage to pull them in with your Q ability, then your E ability is best used on the enemy that was not hooked in since this way you can deal more damage to the hooked in enemy without needing to worry about the other enemy interfering for about 2.5 seconds. Not to mention, you'll also be healed for a bit by the E ability to maybe offset some of the damage your target might inflict on you in retaliation. If you know the central orb is spawning soon, then I highly recommend trying to regroup with your team and readying your Q ability to pull the orb toward your team for an easy orb secure. Even if you're not with your team and there's no enemies near you, try to do this anyway and use that Q into EX Mouse 2 into Mouse 1 combo to secure the orb for your team. If you want to use Thorn to his maximum potential, then I think using his EX Space and R abilities to their best effects would be what you'll be looking to do if possible. For example, you'll want to try to be on the lookout for times when it is best to use Thorn's EX space to avoid an enemy ability and instead emerge under the enemy to attack them. Similarly, you also want to look out not just for yourself but for your teammate as well to try to use your R properly to mitigate damage and potentially damage nearby enemies at the same time. Using Thorn's R ability properly and safely will probably take a bit of practice because it can be quite easy to unexpectedly mess up your teammate's combo or potentially even put them in a worse spot than what they were already in if you were to use it recklessly. Having said that though, don't be discouraged from trying to use it on your teammates sometimes since this is the best way to train your mind to anticipate enemy attacks and all of that training will be helpful when you're trying to learn other champions in battle right that has counters, shields and all those reactionary type abilities. Remember, practice makes perfect. About Thorn's ultimate ability and when to use it, I think the best time to use it would be after an enemy has used up all the escapes just like when using most other highly damaging abilities. Having a plan to keep the enemy within the area of effects of your ultimate before using your ultimate ability itself is usually a good idea as well so that you can maximize the damage you deal to your target. 
One example would be to have your Q ready to hook your enemies back in after using your ultimate on top of them. Or maybe you can have your spacebar ready to stun the enemy caught inside your ultimate ability. In the part where I covered the ultimate ability in the ability section earlier, I also mentioned about using the ultimate to both damage enemies and secure the orb. So using the ultimate ability that way is a possible move as well if the opportunity arises. And so yeah, that's mostly it for his playstyle. Now let us move on to Thorn's battle right options and loadouts. Because there are so many battle rights currently and it will take a long while for me to go through and describe all of them one by one, I will just display them here and if you wish, you can go ahead and pause the video to slowly read through them before continuing with the video. And so pause now to read through the first half. And now again for the second half. Okay, now that we've read all of them, let's continue. First off, I think that all of Thorn's battle rights are pretty decent and can be swapped in to deal with the enemies you're facing, so I don't recommend just sticking with a single build for every single match. With that said though, there are a couple of battle rights which I feel is so good that they should be in most builds since they really benefit Thorn in every single round, regardless of the matchup. These battle rights are Neurotoxin, Purse Thick Stems, and Critical Backlash. Although Critical Backlash isn't as crucial I think, especially in range heavy matchups. Neurotoxin and Parasitic Stems makes your Thorns debuff so much better since it not only reduces the target's damage and healing output, but it also deals more damage to them. When you spread your Thorns debuff onto multiple enemies, you just basically cripple your enemy team by 25% effectively, sort of like a mini weakened debuff. And what makes this battle right so good is that it doesn't just apply to the Thorns debuff that you apply with your master ability. Say if you pick Critical Backlash, the Thorns debuff that is inflicted onto enemies hit by the R ability will also have these weakening effects and increased damage. So yeah, quite a powerful combo indeed. When you're up against multiple melee enemies, Regrowth, Fearsome Uprutal, Impaling Roots and Critical Backlash are some very good battle rights to have. You don't have to pick all of them, but they help you in your fight against melee enemies in their own ways. Regrowth makes you about 10-20% tankier when fighting melee enemies since you're more likely to be able to get Moss 1 hits off onto them. Fearsome Uprutal and Impaling Roots lets you play a bit more aggressively since the former gives you a nice shield to help you against enemy attacks and the latter helps by giving you that little extra burst damage when you're borrowing around. Critical Backlash ensures your R ability is almost always ready when you're fighting against another melee champion and it applies the Thorns debuff to them if they accidentally hit your husk so it is very nice to have when you're fighting against multiple melee enemies who might try to hit you at the same time. Against ranged enemies, you are less likely to use your burrow to run all the way to the enemy side and instead you'll be trying to pull them towards your team with your Q ability. So battle rights like Lurker, Grounding Grasp, Whiplash and Sinister Sap are options that are more appealing in a fight against multiple ranged enemies. Lurker lets you have more of a surprise element in times when you are able to get closer to maybe use your spacebar ability for aggression, so it's quite nice to have. Not only that, it really helps when you're running away with your spacebar ability since people can't tell where you're going and try to attack you immediately when you come off the ground. Grounding Grasp makes your Q ability that much more deadly especially if the enemy doesn't have an escape cooldown ready so that's super handy to have against ranged enemies. If you find that it can be quite hard to deal damage with Thorn sometimes, then taking Whiplash can be a pretty decent option since the 9 damage plus the Thorn's debuff damage can add up over the round if you consistently hit them with the spinning attack. You just gotta make sure the enemy has already exhausted their escape options before you pull them in to make full use of this battle right. Because you'll be playing a lot of poking games in a round against ranged enemies, Sinister Sap can be very good since it gives your E ability a little bit more damage, making you a slightly more deadly threat from afar, and it reduces the cooldown of your E ability, allowing you to use it more often to damage or CC enemies, and perhaps to set up for your team's hard hitting abilities as well, so it's pretty cool. If you have no energy problems when playing a Storm, the no escape battle right is actually a pretty decent choice since most people won't expect it and by the time they realize what's going on, you're already right under them and ready to stun them with your burrow so that can be pretty nice. But then again, you're only going to get at most 2-3 users out of it in a medium length match so maybe not the best use of a battle right slot if you're concerned about getting the most out of your 5 battle right slots. I haven't seen much use of branch out hamstring briars and creeping roots since the other battle rights offer much more compared to these few battle rights. I have tried creeping roots before but most of the time it just feels like people have plenty of time to walk out of the area of effect so it doesn't really do much. It is quite good if it does manage to land and hit an additional target or two though but I wouldn't count on it. 
hamstring bias doesn't seem to offer enough and the range increase from branch out hardly matters, except when you're fighting at a medium range the whole round, so it's hard to see the effectiveness of these battle rights. But perhaps there might be some use for these two rights that I don't know of yet, like maybe if you want to play some mouse one heavy build or something, and take lots of battle rights that let you stick to your enemy more effectively. Then again, Thorn is probably best played a bit more passively and at a distance, so that might not be the best of ideas unless you're trying it out for fun I suppose. So yeah, those were my thoughts on most of the battle rights. Like I mentioned in my beginner tips video, I think you'll want to at least give a bit of thought about what battle rights you're using before each round since that is a good way of understanding the champion more and it'll help with making sure you learn what are the best situations to use, which rights and so on. But in case you want to just quickly take a loadout and jump straight into the game, here are some loadouts that I use. The reasons these battle rights are in the loadouts are the same as what I explained earlier, so I'll try to avoid repeating them. But I'll also try to explain why I might take out a certain battle right to swap for another and in what situations you might want to do that. So yeah, this first build is what I typically use when I'm up against at least a melee in the enemy team. If I'm up against multiple melee enemies, I might swap out Deep Burrow for Regrowth so that I'm a little tankier. Just need to make more careful use of my Burrow at that point. If I feel I need a bit more ranged capabilities against one or more ranged enemies in their team, then I might swap out Deep Burrow or Critical Backlash if I feel safe enough to do so. I'll probably exchange either one or both of them for something like Sinister Sap, Grounding Grasp or Whiplash, and the build will probably end up with something like that. Basically, a bit of a mix of battle rights to deal with both ranged and melee threats. If I have a good support teammate and the enemy team is all ranged, then I would probably use a build like this one. The Q battle rights give me a lot of offensive power, so this will make sure there is at least some damage coming out from me for my team. Again, if you feel like the enemy matchup might overwhelm you and your healer, then don't hesitate to take Grounding Grasp out for something like Sinister Sap. That way you have a bit more healing and you can also CC the enemies more often. An E root onto an enemy followed by a Q to pull the enemy in is kind of like a Grounding Grasp already, so it should be fine making this substitution as well. And so yeah. That's about it on Thorn's battle rights and loadouts. That was a fairly lengthy part, but we'll now move on to champions that synergize with Thorn before we finish the guide with some final notes on Thorn. On team compositions, I find that Thorn can synergize with most champions quite well as long as their teamwork is good, but I'll try to recommend some teammates anyways. He has abilities that can help ranged teammates land their powerful attacks, peel for them and all that sort of stuff, so I think Jumong, Jade and Ashka are some good candidates for teammates for Thorns. Likewise, he has good control abilities to help make it safer for melee teammates to jump in and do damage and all that, so I think Raygon, Croak and Rook are decent teammates for Thorn as well. They take some attention off of Thorn and Thorn can support from a medium range or so, perhaps by using his E ability on an enemy and then focus firing the other together with the teammate. Only downside is that your team might have issues with being kited if the enemy is good at kiting you. And finally, a healer will make Thorn a lot more survivable and so they make great teammates for Thorn as well. They basically allow Thorn to play a lot more aggressively and that can be kinda good sometimes. A support like Puloma, Pestilus or maybe Sirius for maximum CC can be good too. Imagine all the petrifies and entangling roots making it almost a constant 2 vs 1 fight and you two can't die. So yeah. Thorn is an absolute blast to play, his kit is really fun, and his abilities are very good for a slow methodical game that is focused on control and sustain. If that sounds like your thing, definitely give Thorn a try, but be prepared to practice a little bit with him first since it can take a while to get used to his playstyle and abilities. If you already have a good consistent team to play with and you all gel with each other quite well, then Thorn can be a pretty good champion for you to pick up since you can really set up for your team as Thorn and outplay your enemies that way. And so yeah, that's about it for my Thorn guide, I hope you guys found it useful. Just to let you guys know, the next champion guide that I will update will be Ashka, so I hope you guys can look forward to that. Because I want to involve you guys a little bit in my video creation process as well, you guys can actually put a vote for which champion guide you want to see next after Ashka's updated guide. You just need to click the I button at the top right now, and you should see a poll where you can vote for the next champion guide after Ashka's. I'm updating the guides of beginner friendly champions first since those are the most affordable for free to play players and so the options listed there will just be beginner friendly champions first. The only time I will break this cycle of voting and updating guides will be when there's a new champion release like the upcoming release of Destiny the Sky Ranger so don't worry if you don't see the updated guide of the champion you voted for because it will be coming soon after the champion guide on the new champion. 
And so yeah, that's about it for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as well. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave any questions or thoughts in the comment section below, share this video with friends and you can check out my other videos as well if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching my video and until next time guys, have a great day, keep gaming, stay chill and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.